what Egyptian religion was. It's very complex, extends over thousands of years, and there isn't a sort of you know, way to find an actual summary of it. Within the walls of the old city of Jerusalem, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre was built by Emperor Constantine over the site of a pagan temple. In 326 AD, he decreed that this was the exact location where Jesus Christ died and was later resurrected. Millions of Christian pilgrims accept his words as absolute fact. Christianity is hinged on the real Jesus Christ dying and being resurrected. And uh, I think the evidence is very, very clear. That's exactly what happened. Known as the holiest Christian site in the world, visitors mourn his death at the very spot they believe his body was washed by his disciples. For the millions who visit each year, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is absolute proof of the existence of Jesus Christ. The evidence is incontrovertible that Jesus existed historically. Jesus of Nazareth was a person who lived um, and walked the dusty roads of Palestine and was crucified on a Pontius Pilate. The rock formation beneath the church closely matches the description of the resurrection site in the New Testament. It is this kind of evidence that for some confirms the existence of Jesus Christ. He's got four Gospels that are independent witnesses. Uh, all of them were written before the end of the first century. Um, that's not really debated uh, by scholars. No one really knows who wrote the Gospels, although they were attributed to disciples Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But they remain the heart of Christian theology. We have different gospel accounts, but they agree on the core of a human being, Jesus Christ. And then there is external evidence in, for example, Roman historians and, and other places that uh, cite and accept that there was this, this figure. External evidence in the form of several passages of ancient historical text that refer to a Christ-like figure. But others aren't so sure and believe many of these texts are ambiguous or outright forgeries. The greatest suspicion is cast on the work of Flavius Josephus, a respected first century historian whose writings contain references to Jesus. The one passage in Josephus, which on the face of it, really does sound like a very strong piece of evidence for the existence of this man, because here's a Jewish historian who gives us some real interesting insights into this figure Jesus, until you critically analyze it and very quickly realize that it turns out to be a very, very crude forgery. Many scholars claim that in the 4th century, on orders from Constantine, the work of Josephus was reinterpreted to include those references to Jesus Christ. The man assumed to have altered the text was Bishop Eusebius, a powerful figure in Constantine's court. It was just a time of great fraud. All the history of that first important nascent of the church is told by the pet theologian of Constantine, Eusebius. And Eusebius makes no bones about the fact that he has made everything right for the church. And they necessarily schemed um, in an evil way, but they, they succumbed to the temptation uh, that was inevitable once people have blind faith. 